What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Game Ball with your host, Matt Samantia. Today, joining the show, we have Clemson soccer player, national champion, three-time ACC regular season champion, ACC tournament champion. The list just goes on and on for this guy. Enrique Montano the third. How you doing, man? I'm really good. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So before we dive into things and just your career and, and just everything in general, like, just like tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey to soccer and obviously to Clemson now. Yeah, so I grew up playing soccer when I was like around eight years old, and I, I grew up in Seattle, Washington. So just growing up there, I, I played throughout my, my whole middle school and high school career, and then I ended up uh, making my way to Clemson out of anywhere. Um, so I've had a really good time at Clemson, though, and it's been a really, really cool experience living in the South. But I'm just so happy with how much soccer has brought me and how much new cultural experience I've, I've gained through the game. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. You're from Washington, Duval, Washington, played for the Sounders Academy. What was that whole adjustment of, like, why did you decide to go from Washington to literally across the country yeah. to Clemson? So, for me, it was really about experiencing something new. Mm -hmm. I've always traveled being on that team in Seattle so much that I, I appreciated everywhere I went, and I was able to go to so many different countries and states um, playing for that team, and I just learned something new every time I went somewhere, so just wanting to bring that into my college experience and learn a new culture. And there was nothing much different than the South from the Northwest. So um, it was kind of like a leap of faith and I'm so happy I did it. Yeah. Was it, I mean, you said it was a leap of faith, but knowing also like you yes, you're leaving your, you know, your families in Washington, mm -hmm. but a lot of your teammates went to like the university of Washington or yeah. Seattle. So were they almost like surprised that you were, you were going to Clemson and not like playing with them? Yeah, uh, it was kind of, that was one of the harder parts is leaving my, my best friends and doing something when I could have been on a team with them maybe, but I just felt like it was more about experiencing something new and I wasn't alone in it. I had a friend who went to UNC, um, someone that went to like Cornell and Brown. So uh, I wasn't alone in it, but um, they were supportive of me leaving either way, just because we're all chasing our dream and um, it was the best for me. So yeah, you mentioned that's something, you know, pretty cool. Everyone's chasing a dream. Like what's it like knowing that everyone you kind of grew up with and all your friends, like they're succeeding in the soccer journey, like playing college or playing professionally. Like has that, have you ever thought about like just how your, how your whole group is succeeding with soccer? It's, it's weird to think about because like, it's just what I'm used to at this point, but it is awesome being surrounded by so many like successful people in, in soccer. And it's like really inspiring to see what other guys are doing and what levels other people are at. And I mean, there's a lot of people who've gone professional that I know and some people who are doing really well in college still. And it's just awesome to see all my friends journeys that they're on. And I feel like it's something really important to surround yourself with people who you want to, you know, be like, and you'll grow with. And I think my friends have done really good at supporting me and um, boosting each other up to do that. Yeah. Do you still like stay in touch with them? and talk to them about how everything is going yeah uh it's really hard to just being in with how busy soccer is so making time for my friends and just reaching out every once in a while um is really important to me but to be honest like my friends from even seattle were so close that even if we don't talk for like six months we'll still go hang out and be buddies when we get home for a week and it, it doesn't take much catching up we, it's like we never left yeah yeah i mean I, I feel like everyone can really say that whether it's family or friends mm -hmm. You, you can go months without talking to them. That, that connection will always like be there with them. Yeah. Um, but making time to talk to people that, I mean, your, your family's still in the Washington area, right? Yeah. Is it hard to like stay in touch with them? And I mean, I'm assuming you like, can you even talk to them like every day? Like what's that like? Yeah. Uh, it's really tough to like consistently talk to them, mm -hmm. but it's, it, and it, it's hard to keep up up to date with them sometimes and just making sure I'm like making time with them because it's so easy to forget about like life in Washington when I, when I'm all the way over here but just like reaching out and making sure like they're all doing okay and you know keeping up to date with them is really important to me um it is it is tough though to to keep up with that but they were just so supportive from like with me throughout my whole journey that it's like something that I is a priority to me yeah, what was that conversation like with your parents when you were deciding between w what to do for soccer and then ultimately saying, hey, I'm going across the country. <laughs> like, what was that like? Uh, so, I mean, they kind of knew from the start that I wanted to go somewhere far away, mm -hmm. and they were really supportive of that, actually, and they have been ever since. I know my mom, she she probably would have wanted me a little closer, and I could tell, but she was really supportive of me 
uh, going on this new experience. And then I think my dad was just all in on doing whatever I wanted to do and being so fully supportive of that. So, yeah, that's a big thing to ha- when you have your parents support, it's like, you can really just do like, you can do anything yeah. as long as they're there for you. So that's cool how they obviously, I mean, no mom wants their kid leaving, <laughs> leaving home when they can stay home. But yeah. That's cool that they were supportive. Do they come to any of the, the games ever for Clemson? I know it's a far, it's hard journey. It's really hard to, to be able to make that journey just because like plans change so much within the soccer schedules and everything and knowing if I'm going to play or not even play growing up. So, um, they've had, they were able to make the national championship game Mm -hmm. and that was really special to me when they were, when my dad was able to come on the field and, um, just like celebrate with, celebrate with me. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Was that like a full circle moment being the national championship game against Washington? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, it grew up to be a story that like, you know, you hear about, but it is really awesome. And it was, it was surreal at the time because it's not something that like you notice until after and like even months after it's hard to really take in what really happened, but it was an awesome experience to be able to play them because almost every guy on that team I have like really close relationships with and I, I knew them growing up. So as good as I felt at the time, I also, you know, felt bad for, for how close my friends got to that, but they were really supportive when I got back and Actually, the week after we won the national championship, we headed home, and I was training at the UW facilities with my with my friends from there. And so it was awesome seeing them, and they're just so welcoming. And uh, I know the the UW coach was there, and he he sent like a, f- a funny text to our coach about about me being there wearing a Clemson <laughs> paw in their training facility. But uh, yeah, they're they're so awesome. Well, you earned that right to wear. I mean, winning the national championship. Did you? I know you said you were there and you saw them a week after. Did you guys, did you ever bring up the game to them? Like, hey, uh, we won. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't bring that up with them <laughs> just because, I mean, it's just something that was like in the room, but uh, I just think we have such big respect for each other that it doesn't, like, no matter which way the result went, it didn't really matter. We just, we know, like, everyone's talent and uh, we're close, we're so close that no outcome really affected us, mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. So going back, I want to bring, bring back recruitment and, and deciding where you're going to go. First off, with soccer in general, like you look at football and basketball, like recruitment is very publicized. Mm-hmm. You you know where somebody's getting an offer from, when they got the offer, who mm-hmm. has interest, who doesn't. Soccer, it's a little bit different, right? So, yeah. what is that process of just yeah recruitment like? It's it is a lot different. It's a lot more um, working on yourself and like marketing yourself as a as a player as opposed to them reaching out to you. Mm-hmm. So. For me, I had, to, I had to reach out to like a lot of a lot of different schools, and um, my journey to Clemson was actually really interesting. I I reached out to them in my junior year, and then I didn't get any response for for a long time. And um, I went on other visits to other schools while they responded to me, and I was very close to going somewhere else. And then my dad wanted me to reach out just one more time to the other big schools, just because. And I was like, I don't know, I, I really want to go to this school, and and. <laughs> My dad helped me, uh, just encouraged me to reach out one more time to, to the bigger schools. And I ended up getting a answer from Clemson. Like mm-hmm. once I reached out after six months of not hearing from them the first time and they ended up, um, watching me play a couple of times and, um, had interest in me enough to have me come out and visit the campus. But, um, that was one moment that the whole course could have went so differently if I didn't, if I didn't, um, reach out again and be so persistent with like marking myself as a soccer player. Yeah, It's always so crazy to me how like, whether it is, you know, soccer recruitment or just anything in general, like one little thing can change, like can change so much. Yeah. So that's, that is cool. How you were able to reach back out. Like, what did you just send a message? You send more film? Like how did that what so, did you say to them? I mean, yeah, the first, first round was like emails and then mm-hmm. just like introducing myself and kind of who I am. But, um, it was almost like a, it's like a business move when you're like, um, recruiting for soccer and it's really difficult until, unless you have like people helping you do it. And yeah, I had my dad help me a lot. Just like, it's almost like marketing yourself. Like I said, so the second time I kind of revised how I did my, th- did my, um, like email and I included film and then reinstated my interest and stuff like that. And it ended up working. So, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's just your highlights, right? You just cut up some highlights and send it to them. Yeah. I mean, I found this like three minutes of film go such a, went such a long way and uh-huh. changing the course of like what could have happened. Yeah. That, yeah. It is, it is crazy. Um, did you ever think about like staying with the Sounders Academy or was that a possibility like professional interest? Like, um, yeah. So 
it is like a possibility to be able to stay and maybe make your way from like the second team up to the first team. Mm -hmm. But I feel like college was just like a, was the right thing for me to do. And it's a, it was a good pathway. And while in college, it's not like you're giving up the dream to go pro. You're just continuing your develop development and everyone's at different stages. I wasn't ready, especially physically yet at, at that stage when I was graduating high school. So it was a really good decision for me to come to college and grow more maturely physically and as a soccer player, just so I can give myself a better chance for when I want to try to do whatever I can after. Yeah. So you said you have to grow physically, but then like when you think about soccer, it's not, you know, physical, like you're hitting someone like hard every time, Yeah. more cardio, but then there is, you know, strength still involved. So what did you have to grow from, I guess, a physical standpoint to, to get better as a player? Yeah. Um, I mean, for me personally, I, I had the cardio, um, a lot, I had a really good cardio, but it was really about, um, increasing my speed and my, my strength on the field. And I mean, it's really hard to tell until you're on the field yourself, but just like every, like every mile per hour of speed matters so much and every like little inch matters getting to a ball. So it's just like improving my speed a little bit, but it wasn't just like speed physically. It was also improving my speed of play and like how I saw the game and playing quicker because when all these guys are getting bigger and stronger and faster as they grow older, you have to be able to keep up with them on the ball too and play outsmart them sometimes. So just learning how to play quicker um, is something that I've learned really well um, being in this program. Yeah. That's like a big mental thing too. I mean, like you mentioned, there's always going to be someone on the pitch who's going to be more, you know, stronger or faster. So it is more mental yeah. for, for like any, any sport, any athlete. Um, but kind of just like, what's like an underrated part of soccer? Because, you know, like you said it's mental, but like, is there like something where you have to be really good at it that people really don't think you have to be good at? Um, I mean, one thing really emphasized in our program is just thinking of the next play and thinking ahead. And I think just knowing what you're going to do before you get the ball is something that's really not noticeable unless you're on the field, but just knowing like the two options you have behind your back or the guy coming. And I think awareness is really important with that. And it's not something you really notice um, just off the get go, but it's something that you notice when you're on the field and playing with great players that they know, they know what's going to happen before it happens. Yeah. How quick of a decision do you need to make as soon as you get the ball? I mean, it really depends on the level that you're playing. So, um, as you get into ACC play and um, the, the after after playoffs, uh, it's really important to almost know what you're doing before you get the ball. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we try to emphasize a lot in practice. And um, I get caught on a lot for by coach, but um, <laughs> it's, it's something that's really sounds easy to think of, but it's so hard to put into your game. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do you just like, when you don't have the ball, do you just observe the field and, and realize... I have this option and this option or yeah it's kind of just about like once you before you even get the ball just knowing where the space is and where the other defenders are and seeing where your teammates are and like knowing where they're running and then just it's honestly like uh it's like uh, it's nature at that point you just uh you just like have instincts and you just work off those so yes i mean practice can only help you like so much i can imagine right there's going to be situations in the game where you probably didn't practice it so how do you like you mentioned you've been developing, you know, at, at Clemson through, but how do you grow that, like that natural instinct to just be able to say, I haven't seen this, but I know what to do now. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like the beauty of soccer is that nothing's planned and there's, there's, there's plays you can do on set pieces, but in general, it's all just like the player's game and you do whatever you, whatever you want to on the field and it's all free flowing. So, I mean, just practicing any different thing you can playing different positions, um, trying new things on the field and just applying what you have in your, like your knowledge bank to different scenarios on the field is the best you can really do because you should really have to make it up as you go. And there's no, there's no like, um, plays in the game, which makes it so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So did you always know that you want to be like a defender, a center back type of role, or did you want to do something different? Um, so I would say like, once I got to a high level and joined the Sounders Academy, they kind of put me at outside back and okay. that's where I fit best. And I think there's like, there's distinct body types and like natural um, physical abilities that fit other like certain positions the best. And so having good cardio was something that really helped me be a good outside back and be able to play full games. So I was kind of just like um, put into that role before I knew it, but I'm glad I was because the coaches um 
I guess they knew more about myself than I even knew yeah. growing up. And so, I mean, it worked out really well. And, um, I, I think, I think it's worked out. Yeah. I think it's worked out well. Yeah. I mean, clear. I mean, you're playing at Clemson, so I think <laughs> it, I think it has worked out pretty well for you. Uh, was it like, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say it's an ego thing, but it's like a hard adjustment because I feel like growing up, you want to be the one scoring all the yeah. goals, right? That's what you want to do. You want to be a striker or, you know, a winger. Cause that's, you know, yeah. with basketball, you want to be the guy that scores all the time. So realizing, Hey, I'm going to play more defense. Was that, was that like a hard thing for you to swallow? Um, I never was really scoring too many goals growing up, so it wasn't the <laughs> hardest adjustment. So if I couldn't score goals, the next best thing was assisting my teammates. And I think just doing whatever I can to help my teammates was the, the, the best thing for me to do. So I just found joy in just helping the, the team in whatever way I could. And it really wasn't that hard of an adjustment once I uh, like learned that mindset. Okay, yeah, okay, that makes sense then. I mean, uh, you said you want to help your teammates build a pass the ball well. You know, you've you kind of grown into someone that can get some good assists and, and, and pass the ball. Like, what is what goes into, again, I know you said it's instinct option A, option B, mm -hmm. but what goes into, like, knowing how to make this pass or that pass? Yeah, I mean, play? I do think it's just a lot of practice and it's knowing your teammates and, like, who they are. So, I mean, for me, being an outside back, you have to know who's in the box and the kind of guys you're crossing to, whether you go lower or you go higher. Mm -hmm. And then it's also just, like, repetition, knowing what kind of technique to use on the ball. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think practice is huge for that one. And then just following your instinct in the moment because once you get around the box and you have to try to get those assists, you have to play so quick because that's where all the numbers are and the defending gets even more crucial for the other team. So it's just it's really just instinct to that point. Mm -hmm. And now looking over to the start of your Clemson career, freshman year you ended up redshirting, right? You didn't, mm -hmm. you didn't play any games. Did you know that the idea of you redshirting was going to happen when you – committed to Clemson or is it just something that happened later down the road? Yeah. So that was something that happened when I got here and it was, it was kind of like a shock to myself that I wasn't going to be able to play for a whole year just because I mean, everyone who's coming here, they're, they're really good on their teams and um, they probably play significant minutes. So just coming here and having to change my whole mindset to growth personal growth for a whole year it was it was really difficult to cope with and it made me mature a lot as a person though and I'm really glad that I did it mm -hmm. um, just because I was able to grow so much physically off the field and mentally as a person to handle the hardships and I learned a lot of patience through that year yeah so like hindsight 2020 it helped a lot because you did grow a lot but coming in from being you know you won the national championship with the Sounders coming in being that guy getting a lot of playing time was that a little bit like a frustrating situation i mean again you're you're young right you're yeah coming out of high school so it, it was definitely frustrating but um as soon as you get to this program it's really instilled in you that um you're supposed to be team first and it's about what's doing best for the team and so at that point uh for me impacting it on the field wasn't as wasn't what i would do best at and wasn't my biggest asset to the team is more about personal growth for the future and helping the team any way I could off the field. So just being the best teammate I could. And that was registering that year and growing and developing so I could be a better teammate later on on the field. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now looking over to your second season, you started to get in some, some more playing time. You played in your, in your first, you know, your first game was during your second season against South Carolina, subbed into it. I know, you know, you didn't start right away, but like, what was that whole just walking onto the field playing college soccer for the first time? What was that like? Yeah, I mean, let alone just entering a college game, entering a game at USC is is really special, and it was a crazy environment to enter. Um, it's really just like a milestone in, like, your career that I feel like was so important to me, and, like, um, I just have so much gratitude that I was able to get on the field, and so much hard work paid off to get me to that point, mm -hmm. but it also made me hungry to, to get more and keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what was it like walking into that atmosphere of, uh, you know, a rowdy South Carolina uh, <laughs> atmosphere? I mean, I believe, I mean, Clemson was up, what, 3-0 at the point, Yeah, right? I mean, for me, because I was in that game at 3-0 already, it, it was more relaxed for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, seeing it from from when it was not 3-0, it was, it was very um, competitive, and the fans help, helped them a lot, and it is a really crazy environment. Now, I was lucky enough to experience South Carolina also this, this year, yeah. and it – it uh, does not disappoint at all going there. They, 
it's everything that you hear of when yeah. coming from Seattle, hearing about the rivalry. <laughs> you don't really understand it until you get in the moment. Was it a lot of trash talk? Were they saying stuff to you? Yeah, they say, they say a lot of bad things, and <laughs> there's a lot of talking. Uh, any little mistake. I'm, I remember one time my shin guard fall, fall out, and I, I just had to fix my shin guard, and I got, I, I swear, like 5,000 people just like <laughs> heckling me for just for that, but um, it definitely helps helps them um, being in that environment, and it's, it's really fun to go into, mm -hmm. but it makes you respect the rivalry and why Clemson yeah. hates them so much. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, if it's a good rivalry, it's going to be a fun game. Have you have you lost to them since you've been here? Um, I don't think so, I don't no. Think you, yeah, I don't think Clemson has. No, I don't yeah, think look so. At that. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, hopefully, you know, last season, you yeah, hopefully you don't yeah. experience that, but... Um, being in that atmosphere, are the are the players? Is it just like another game for them? Or is it like a little extra chippiness going into it? There, uh, we try to approach it as you know just another game, but it always means a little bit more, I think. And um, for us, we try to keep as level headed as possible. So it said a lot to play the game, not the occasion. Mm -hmm. So just just approaching it that way is really important for us because we're not a team that's gonna really ride on ride on emotion but we want to try to use that to our advantage. So um, trying to approach that as level-headed as possible is really important, but obviously it means a little more yeah. every time. Yeah, for, for like, I guess preparation for every game, like whether it is, you know, the start of the season or a rivalry game or a playoff game, how, how do you, like, try and keep your emotions, like, in check? Because, you know, depending on the situation, right, I can't, can't imagine you're entering, you know, an ACC tournament game and you're, mm -hmm. like, not riled up to be out there. How do you keep your emotions in check? I mean, throughout the week, we have the exact same process and the same practices that we would um, for any other game. So um, I think the coaches do really good at just keeping us down to earth with that. And then um, really just trusting our process and how we do things is how we how we keep the same emotions no matter what game it is. And um, it's pretty con been pretty consistent throughout the time I've been here that we don't we don't get up for games that we need to get up, but don't get up for the games we don't need to. I, I feel like we keep a pretty level head, just trusting the process and how we do things. Yeah, is that important that you're in the game, you're just, you're level headed, you're just, you're at zero, right? You're not like letting the emotions get the best or the worst of you? Yeah, I mean, every player is different, obviously. So for me, I, I like to keep a more level head and um, not right on emotion. Some people live off that a little more, yeah. but uh, as in general for our team, we try to keep in the middle where we're not too riled up, but not too calm. Yeah. So we play with like a calm aggression is what we say. Well, cause, cause I feel like sometimes if you, let's say you get like riled up, it can make you make like bad decisions, right? Yeah. Is that like a possibility. Yeah. I mean, that's something that, that soccer players often use just like as a tactic. If, if you're able to keep your emotions um, better than others, then it's something you can use against your opponent and, you know, try to get them sent off or whatever, get fouls around the box. But it's definitely a tactic that goes into the game. Is there like a, any like trash talk while you're in the middle of the game? Uh, I, I try to stay away from that, but there's, there's definitely stuff that comes up, especially in the rivalry games when you're playing like USC or Duke. Um, it's bound to come out a little bit. Yeah. yeah because I feel like, I mean, you know, with, with certain sports, you're, you know, you're close to your opponent. Soccer, it's more spread out. So is it like, like it's hard to get in a little, you know, some words when yeah. you really want to. I mean, it's, it's more so like just you and the guy you're marking. So as the right back, it's just me and the left wing all game. We're still yeah. touching all game and really tight. So, I mean, sometimes things come out, but um, a lot of the opponents in the ACC especially are pretty respectable. And um, at the end of the day, we all, we all are friends off the field. So Yeah, yeah. And so looking to, like I said, you came off the, the bench for the, your first career, like game to enter against South Carolina. What is it like entering game coming off the bench compared to starting a game? It's, it's um, tough mentally sometimes to, to come off the bench because, because you know that, you know, you're coming into a game and you're trying to live up to the person that, that they are replacing. So that in opposed to starting a game, I feel like you, you have some grounded confidence almost just because you're, you're put there for a reason by the coach, but it's really important for me just like through my whole career to try to make like a positive impact when I got on the field and help the team in whatever way they needed. So yeah. Is it, is it hard to like try and stay loose when you're coming off the bench? Yeah. Uh, it's more so just like mental. I feel like than anything, mm -hmm. just keeping up with the plays, see what, where you're going in on the field, making sure you, you like see the tendencies of the guy you're going to mark and then the guy you're going to attack. So um, being locked in mentally kind of just keeps you in the loop and uh, the physical part just comes pretty easily. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And yeah. now moving on to your, I guess, redshirt sophomore year, your third season, 
the national championship season, right? That whole season, that season as a whole, I mean, like, what was that all like, being a part of that team? I mean, it, it was really just a fun journey uh, overall. Um, going through the journey was just as good as winning the national championship and mm-hmm. living every day with my best friends. Um, that was one of the seasons I've enjoyed most ever, just because how close we all were and how much we enjoyed the process. Yeah. Was that, is that like an important thing to just embrace, you know, the process and embrace it all as a whole? Yeah. I mean, that's what we try to really try. I try to, to live by is that I'm not trying to specifically chase trophies, but I'm just trying to do the process the best I can. And, um, you really live by that. So, I mean, I found that's, that was really important through that year. During that season, was there ever a moment where you, I mean, obviously going to every, you go in every season ex- expecting to be the best team in the country, expecting to win the national championship. But was there like a certain buzz on, in, in the locker room throughout that whole year, like thinking you had something cooking? I mean, during the during the year itself, I don't think we looked that far ahead. Yeah. We really just worried about the next game, and we really emphasized that. But as we got into the playoffs, we, we really noticed how, how, we were, we were, how we were doing our thing and how, honestly, like luck was on our side at times, and <laughs> we just knew that it was our time um, pretty early on, I think. Mm-hmm. What was that like mindset like flip or you had to flip the switch for your mindset after the losing the ACC tournament, right? To then saying, all right, we have a bigger goal to accomplish. Was that like, was it easy to move on? Was it motivation? I think it was honestly what it maybe was better for us in the long run that we lost that game just because it really lit a fire under us to, to attack the next one um, as much as we could. And I don't, I don't really think we needed a switch. It's just that loss really hurt it hurt enough that it like lit a fire in us but it was also just because i think we lost that game with like 23 shots to like two or three shots <laughs> and it was like a one zero game but um we really like we, we understood that we played well in the stats showed that so uh we weren't we weren't, weren't like um what's it called we weren't uh what's we weren't like discouraged yeah discouraged yeah, yeah. So we really just continue with our process because um, we were happy with how we played and we know that's how a soccer goes sometimes. Yeah, is that, is that ever like crazy to think you could have that many shot attempts and, and still like lose the, the match? Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of soccer is that you can focus as much as you want on, on all the stats and everything you're doing, but it's really just the goals that matter. Yeah. So, I mean, just like refining every detail and every practice is all you can really do and the goals, they'll, they'll come if you do the process the right way. Mm-hmm. So looking to, you know, the tournament, the playoffs, playing that first game against Denver, one, one, nothing, very close game. Uh, what was that? What was that like? It's really just crazy how entering the tournament, you know, every year that like every single game is going to be so close, no matter the first seed or the last seed in the tournament with soccer. It's just like every game comes down to itches. So you try not to think about it, but it's crazy how like one moment can change the whole direction of your of your playoff run. So um, just like really, honestly, like I was saying earlier, just trusting the process and not not getting caught up in what could happen or what couldn't happen. And just focusing on the positive of what will happen when you when you win the game was important for us. And I believe those the first two games of the tournament, Kentucky and Denver, they were in Clemson, right? Yeah. What was the the atmosphere of playing? You know, tournament soccer. You know, in uh, Clemson at it, Riggs, it's the best thing ever to play play a tournament soccer in Clemson. Is you have the fans behind you, and it's like we're up one zero when we even start. <laughs> uh, the support we have around our community is like insane. So it's really just like embracing the moment and like enjoying the opportunity that we created for ourselves, and then putting on a show and making the people who came and the people who support us so much uh, proud of us. Yeah, how important is that fan support and having them show out? I mean, it means everything to us, and it's why we work so hard. Um, so many people pour their time and their their efforts just to come see us, and so putting on a show for the students and for the community who comes um, to watch us, it's it's huge for us. It's everything. Does it give you like the chills sometimes when it's like a packed out, you know? Um, yeah, it's it's really surreal to see where like where you come from until now mm-hmm. to see that many people in the stands, and I think the biggest impact is just like when you're after the game and you have little kids coming up and their mom and dad's asking for pictures with you or signing balls. It just shows like how much of an impact you have on the community around you, and it, it's just really awesome. Yeah, and, and and being that role model, I mean, you're you're a college student and, and you have like kids looking up to you. That's, I mean, I, I don't even know what that could be like. 
uh, I mean, it's really, I know it's, it's hard to think about cause I mean, we are really just normal guys, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, people respect us so much from just how we kick a ball. So it's, it's awesome to see that we were able to inspire young kids and mm-hmm. trying to like leverage that while we're here and just make the most impact on our community possible is, is huge for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now moving on to the Oregon state, the Notre Dame games, penalty kicks, like it came down to the wire. Yeah. So seeing the team, you know, pull those games out, like. I mean, you said luck was on your side earlier. Were games like that, did you have to have a little luck on your side to win? Yeah, I think uh, Oregon State was one of the craziest games. I I remember it was freezing cold, so windy, and we were on the back ropes for a while. But uh, the team's perseverance through that was insane, and they, they they held on, and the game eventually switched, and we won in PKs. But... You gotta you gotta have a little luck to win a couple of PK shootouts on the run, but um, I think the team's perseverance and just like holding on and um, the grit to keep going helped helped us win that game for sure. Yeah, definitely. Now moving on to the this past season, right? I'm assuming expectations they were high entering it, right? Just coming off a national championship. Yeah, it was a it was, it was big for us to be our own team and, uh, and add to the legacy rather than live off the past. So that was a big emphasis for us to, to live up to, to what we can do and not worry about the past, um, past team. Cause expectations were obviously high and everyone put those on us from the start. Yeah. So you, you said you, you want to build your own team and, and, but did you feel like, do you still feel some, like, did you feel some of the pressure during that season? Just because, you know, you can say what you want to say, but you know, you, you do want to win a national championship and, People are really saying, "Hey, like they're they're gonna do it again." Uh, for me, I felt the support from the community was bigger than ever mm-hmm. um, through that season, just because maybe what was brought in from the previous season. So I was really thankful for that, but I didn't really feel pressure just because we showed up to the office and did what we could every day, and um, that's all we could really do. So, what was this year like? Bringing, I guess, taking on a new role, right? Because you you appeared in twenty games and you were getting a lot of playing time. Mm-hmm. So, what was that whole change like for you? It is a lot different to go from um, being like a more impactful guy for off the field and just helping the teammates in any way I could and in scout practices to being a more impactful role and playing on the field a lot. Um, it really also was like another milestone for me just being able to experience what it's like to play significant minutes a lot and um, like show that some of my hard work started to pay off. So I thought it was really awesome. Yeah, so seeing the growth from you know redshirting your first year obviously not playing any games so being like a big primary player this past season could you like have you even thought about how much you've grown as a player it's really hard to in the moment just because how fast like college life goes playing Mm -hmm. sports and being in academics but it is really uh awesome just to think how much how much people have supported me through this journey and how many how long through these four years that i've had the support from my family and from all the staff that that continually helped me every day to get to where i am so so a big milestone that happened this past year i mean it took four years but (laughs) scored your first career goal for clemson against umass Mm -hmm. i mean what was what was that like scoring a goal uh in the moment like it didn't really feel real till the ball went in but i think the best part was just celebrating with my my friends on the field and um i felt the love a lot from them and it was just one of the best experiences <laughs> really ever so like what what prompted you to say yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go for it I, I honestly it was all instincts at that point I, I didn't really know what i was doing until i, I scored the goal uh <laughs> it's not something that i really trained so <laughs> it just it just kind of happened and i was really fortunate that it did because it created really special memories i mean you know, it was your first goal. The celebration wasn't really there, was it? <laughs> That's something that I I don't normally practice. Being a I'm no Isaiah Reed when I'm when I'm playing, so uh, I I don't have those really brewed up. So I, it was kind of on the spot. I had to think of something, you know. So yeah. the best thing with me for me was just to celebrate with my teammates and you know get the big hugs in. Yeah, are you, are you like working on any uh, goal celebrations now? That uh, know, one under your belt. I mean, you got to get another. Yeah, just because I scored one doesn't mean I'm gonna start thinking about the goal celebrations too <laughs> too quickly, but. I'll try to think of something for the the next season if yeah. it ever happens again. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was you know it was it was a crazy shot. I mean, it went off the post, right? Yeah. So like, very unusual, but it went in, and that's all. Yeah. That, that's all that matters. So a team that you played that that season or this past year that obviously gave Clemson some trouble was Syracuse, right? Mm-hmm. Talented team, won the ACC final. What made them such a hard team to go against? I mean, yeah, they had uh, they had great experience on their team, and they were very physically dominant. Mm-hmm. I thought they were a really good team, and they deserved everything they got. Um, 
they were a very tough tough team to face and i think it was there's a culmination of things like their formation was difficult for us to play against um their size was was hard and then they're a really gritty strong team they were never out of a game mm-hmm. and so with them winning the ac you know tournament yeah i mean you know clemson is still very talented but right now they have the bragging rights so looking ahead of this this coming season what do you think clemson needs to do to be able to remind people that hey you know we're still that we're still the top dog around here yeah, so, I mean, for us, our processes don't really change. We're, we're still doing everything we do every day to, um, to reach our goal of winning, winning trophies. So, I mean, for us, it's just approaching every day um, with, what we, what, with what we can do. And then we're also trying to – we had a younger team last year, so everyone maturing more and um, people stepping into bigger roles is really important for us. And then also our newer guys coming in in the summer will really help us um, – launch what we need to and I think it'll be a really good team this year how important do you think this spring season is to have success in the fall I think it's huge Uh, a lot of guys who haven't been able to play a lot of significant minutes in the fall are able to play that in the spring and then there's also a lot of um, development in the in the weight room and on the field Um, during the fall you can't really practice much because you have game after game um, every three or four days and so having a week or two weeks in between games we're really able to develop tactics and um, players that are able to develop more on the field especially the ones who aren't able to get enough minutes during the fall so I think there's so much growth going on right now so in the spring is it more like developing as a personal player like you know uh, physic physically than it is like in the fall where the, I assume the fall is just more prepping for the next game and then understanding how to play like in that certain formation and stuff. Yeah. So in the fall, it's really just about, um, you know, scouting the other team and preparing for them for a couple of days and play and then do the same thing over and over and over. And you just, you basically learn through the game, but, um, in the spring we're able to learn through practice and we're able to get more lifts in. So it's really developing everyone as a, as a player a lot more in the spring. Um, as you can focus on your personal development, um, and not just, the team winning that that game, that next game. Yeah, and so looking to like this like a college schedule for soccer, is it like hard traveling all these places? Like, what goes into everything to just to travel, prepare, do school as well? Like, what's the whole schedule like? It it is tough, especially um, having a lot of games in like Duke or, or Raleigh area. Yeah. It is a is it a tough drive, but we're really fortunate to have a private charter a lot of times. And so going to places like Notre Dame, we, we were able to charter just for the day or UNC last year. So um, Clemson does a really good job of it, like supporting us through that way. And then just academically, I think the support's like um, it's it's phenomenal, honestly, how much they support us and we are able to succeed despite not being in the classroom. And I think professors have been really, um, really flexible with us in that way too. Yeah, definitely. And it is good to have that support. And I mean, I feel like Clemson in general is just like family atmosphere. So your professors, they want you to do well on the field. They'll help you do well, obviously academically. A big thing I want to bring up is you decided to come back this season, right? What led to the decision of saying, I want to come back to Clemson for one more year? Yeah, so I thought for me, it was the best move for me just as a person so I could, I could continue my education mm-hmm. as well as continue growing myself as a soccer player. So I don't think I was ready yet to go to the next level. Um, but I also have a great opportunity here with my COVID year and my redshirt year that I'm able to play more college soccer and continue my education. So I just think growing and getting my MBA is huge for me. And I know soccer won't last forever. So um, just having that under my belt so that I can go under um, any workforce after soccer, um, just trying to plan ahead a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Do, do you have aspirations of trying and play professionally after your career at Clemson comes to an end? Yeah, I definitely want to try just because it's always been the dream and I just love the process so much of playing with teams and um, the sport itself. And so just continuing it as long as I can is, is huge for me. I would love to play after, but I also have aspirations to, you know, enter a new field and I don't even know what that is yet, but just, just like make an impact in another part of the world as well. Yeah, definitely. Do you have any like personal, I guess, goals you want to accomplish this season to just grow as a player? Uh, I haven't really thought of like goals for this next coming fall, but I mean, for me, it's just really approaching every day with like a hundred percent locked in mentality and trying to improve. Um, 
with whatever coaches give me and all the taking in all the, all the feedback that I get. And then I'm really also trying to grow as a leader on the team. I think that's the biggest part of, for me this year. Um, just like trying to be a good role model for the kids that were coming in and the ones under me. Mm -hmm. So you've played alongside or just been on the same team as some, some great defenders at Clemson, you know, Justin Malo, Oscar Argan, and then, uh, obviously Hamidi Diop, who's number one pick in the draft. Yeah. What was it, what has it been like being surrounded by like, not only talented players, but talented players and your position group. Uh, I think it's really helpful, honestly. They they really teach me a lot about what it takes to be that good off the field and on the field. Like it's no it's no um, coincidence that they're so good off on the field when you see them off the field and how they act every day. So really, just like learning from them and taking in what they do, and then um, also learning how they act on the field and how competitive they are. It's really inspirational and it helps it helps a lot. Definitely, and and with how many Diop first pick in the draft what is he like as a player and, and just as a person yeah he, he's a really good teammate um first and foremost but on the field as a player he's someone who always wants to win and he really commands the respect of others on the field just through through his presence and you know how good of a player is when he has a presence to him that that um like engages people to want to be on his team and be around him and work for him so he, he's a great pl uh, teammate on the field mm -hmm. and then looking over to the coach coach noonan how yeah. has he just helped you develop, not only as a player, but just as like a person, right? He, you know, he, yeah. coaches, they're supposed to help you on the field, but they want to help you grow off the field. So yeah. what has he been like to you? I just think the culture that he built and the standards he like holds us by has helped me grow so much. And it, it's just like inspiring to see how, how much of like a servant to the players he is and how he leads in that way. And I mean, I'm really thankful for him because every time – uh, I show up every day. He's always holding me accountable. There's never you don't get a day off with him, and I, I think the standard that he holds you to every day. If you're able to survive in the program and keep going through however many years, it really uh, puts you out a better person. So saying survive in the program is he like he really pushes you? Is that what you? Yeah, mean? I mean it's definitely not for everyone. The the competitive and uh, spirit and the high standards that that are part of the program, but um, it's definitely something that like once you're in it for long enough. That, that you really start to notice changes. I can't believe I'm asking you again this question, you know, pretty late in the interview, but is it soccer or is it, is it football? What do, you, what do you call it? What's the proper name? <laughs> I mean, I've grown up in America always, so I've, I've always called it soccer and I live by that. So mm -hmm. I know there might get some hate out there for that, but I've always just, I've always called it soccer. That's, that's a pretty controversial thing to say. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, even in the locker room, I feel like with all the international guys, we, we still call it soccer mm -hmm. uh, amongst ourselves. So I don't know. I don't know. I should go by soccer. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. And my, my, my final question I have for you, Enrique, is when your Clemson career is all said and done, you know, I mean, whether that's in a year from now, two years, who knows how long. But when it's all said and done, what do you want people to just remember you as, whether that is as a player or, or as a person? Uh, I really want to just leave my jersey in a better place than when I got it. And so impacting the program in whatever way I can every single year is huge to me. And I just want to be known as like a great teammate someone who helped people on and off the field and someone people wanted to be around and someone who also lived by the core values of the team and really, really trusted the process to, to grow as a man. And hopefully I can be an example for those to come. Definitely. Well, Enrique, thank you for doing this interview. And again, we, we had a, we had a superstar on today, Enrique <laughs> Montana, you know, national champion, three time ACC regular season champion, ACC tournament champion and, and the, the face you could say of uh, Clemson soccer coming up <laughs> this season, but Enrique, I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, Thank you. thanks for your time. This was awesome. Definitely.